Hello and welcome to Strictly Salina. I'm your host, Marnie Maddock. Strictly Salina is a program that showcases nonprofit organizations in our area and upcoming events that they're having. If you'd like to be on Strictly Salina, I encourage you to give us a call at Community Access. You can reach us at 823-2500. That's 823-2500. Well, I am so excited on the program today. We have a lovely, awesome guest with a great, great message and, and so many awesome things that are impacting our community. So without further ado, I want to introduce Ms. Courtney Train. Hello, Courtney. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It seems like forever, although I saw you this morning. Yeah. <laughs> But it's been a while since you've been in the studio. Yeah, it like, has. Yeah. It's really fun to be back. I was here in middle school and then just now and then. And now I'm here again. You this is are. great. You are. It's so awesome. Well, tell us about your role and your involvement in DVAC and everything DVAC. Sure. So I work at DVAC, which is the Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas. And what we do is we provide free and confidential services to victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, elder abuse, stalking, and teen dating violence. So a wide range of uh, people who are experiencing abuse in their lives. And what those services look like is um, just supportive services. So we have a 24-hour crisis counseling uh, hotline, and we also provide different supportive services with counseling. We do a lot of safety planning with them. Uh, we have an emergency safe shelter, so if someone is trying to get out of an abusive situation, this is somewhere they can go that is um, not disclosed in the community, and the safety is the number one priority, so that's awesome that they can go to a very comfortable location. Uh, we also can go to court with our clients, and if they are wanting to file for protection from abuse order or or a protection from stocking order. That's something that we can help them with. So whatever they need, we try to get that for them. And if we can't, then we connect them to resources in the community that can. So it's a really, really cool organization that I'm just proud to be involved with. Now, tell me your official title. You're a community engagement coordinator? Yeah, so I'm the community outreach and outreach. engagement oh, coordinator. Okay. <laughs> now, how long have you been with DVAC? Um, it's about three years now. So as soon as I, I went to school here in Salina Central and went away to college and now I'm back here and just it feels really meaningful to be at a job in my hometown where I can make a difference and I'm a part of a national and international movement to end violence so that feels really awesome for me. Now, now you know sometimes it seems like though even though 2017 going soon to be 2018 you would think that um, this would be something that would hopefully, you know, statistics are going down, and maybe they are. I don't know. That's one of my many questions to ask you. But it seems like something that still isn't talked about as much as it should be. Yeah, and I love how you say it should be talked about more. Um, definitely uh, domestic violence and sexual abuse, trafficking, these are all, they feel like new issues to us. But, of course, they are a part of our history, a part of, you know, the making of who we are today. Um, and people argue that numbers, they go go up, they go down. Honestly, we want to see them go up because that means more people are reporting. So in my personal opinion, I think, you know, domestic violence is still happening um, just as it was 100 years ago. It was probably more in your face and no one really cared because it wasn't a social stigma. Um, but there's still people in abusive relationships and unhealthy relationships. And they're finally getting the courage to talk about it because we're having this conversation right now, because, um, you know, people are having campaigns and they want to get the word out. So it's hard to know if there, if it's increasing or decreasing, but we want to see more reports and we want to see more police calls and we want to see more police arrests. That's a huge um, win for, for our team and I guess for the movement to end violence. Now as far as, and I know you just mentioned about numbers and you know they kind of fluctuate and sometimes it's hard to uh, gauge, but as far as all the many services you provide, in Salina, um, is, does it seem, does the scale seem to tip higher in like, is domestic violence like higher like with uh, married couples versus like teen domestic violence? Hmm. I mean, is there a variation or is it just kind of even kill across the board? Um, yeah, and it's, it can be hard to know whether it's happening more with adults, married couples, um, non-married couples or children, but we see it across the board. Of course, we're getting more adults that are coming to us. Um, Statistically, we're seeing more heterosexual relationships that disclose to DVAC. It's typically women, um, women anywhere from you know 16 to 
60, 70, you know, we have seniors who are in our emergency safe shelter and people who are seeking that refuge. A lot of the time we have this idea of what a domestic violence victim and perpetrator looks like, but the truth is domestic violence does not discriminate. Anyone can be a victim, anyone can be a perpetrator. There's no one race, um, ethnicity, sexuality, anything like that that dominates it. Anyone can learn those unhealthy behaviors in a relationship and use that to their partner, use it against their partner to control them. And that's what we're talking about. Um, and a lot of times people think that this isn't happening with teens, but this is a huge epidemic with teens. Like you think that you just wake up one day as, as an adult and like, oh, now I'm going to be in this relationship. No, this, these types of relationships begin in adolescence. They're learned during childhood. Children are witnessing abuse in their households and that's normalized for them. They think this is what love looks like. This is what it means to be a man or a woman. This is what relationships are. And as soon as they get into relationships as teenagers, they are in that victim or offender role already. And it again normalizes it for the rest of their lives. So it's very hard for me as a young woman, I constantly have young people coming into the shelter who are my age or younger. And I'm like, I can't even imagine. I still see myself as a kid. And you know, these people who I can relate with are going through these really, really difficult situations. So definitely it's happening with our youth. Uh, one in four teens experience teen dating violence in the problem is, one yeah, one in four young wow. people. Um, the problem with that is a study that was done showed 81% of parents don't think teen dating violence is an issue. So we have a lot of kids who are in unhealthy relationships and a lot of parents who don't think this is a problem. We're not talking about healthy, unhealthy relationships in our classrooms. We're not, you know, concerned about these issues, but this is the foundation for our lives. And these are, once they have their own kids, it's gonna normalize that for them as well. So one in seven children nationally uh, witness domestic violence or experience that abuse in their household. So that's a lot of kids who are experiencing adverse childhood experiences. And that messes you up behaviorally, socially, mentally, everything. And then you get mal coping mechanisms such as drugs, alcohol, uh, self-harm. And it's, those are all symptoms of the abuse that they're experiencing in the home. Are there any key um, telltale signs or indicators that that people can you know at least be aware of? I mean, mm -hmm. if, and and again, one would think that okay, we should all know this, but. <laughs> What is it you should not shoot on yourself? I mean, if it was so obvious, you know, we would still not be having such, you know, such a need for your agency. Thankfully, though, you're here. But, um. <laughs> yeah, so there are definitely warning signs um, that you can pay attention to. A lot of times abuse is very gradual. So people in abusive relationships don't notice it um, right away. It can take years down the road. And then, of course, once it gets really bad, they can look back and start to see those red flags. Um, so the number one red flag is jealousy in a relationship, because jealousy means that you don't trust your partner. Um, and there's different types of perpetrators who have different warning signs, but a specific perpetrator who's really jealous, those are incredibly violent individuals who feel like their partner is constantly cheating on them. So they're accusing their partner of looking at other people, of you know dressing a certain way, and the partner is just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they've been emotionally abused for so many years that they already feel worthless about themselves. They've been trained not to look at people, um, you know, to just try not to engage with anyone because they're afraid I'm gonna get in trouble or be accused of looking at someone else. So jealousy is a huge warning sign. And people think jealousy is very normal or even flattering. And yes, to an extent, jealousy is a normal emotion and experience. But when jealousy gets to a point of where you're accusing your partner and you can't trust them and you're using it to justify your violence and abusive behaviors and tactics, that's when it's unhealthy. Um, other warning signs, so if a partner feels like they're constantly walking on eggshells, they may make comments to you as the friend and say, oh, I, I don't want to do that because, you know, it might upset my partner. And that should be a, a kind of a warning sign to you, like, hmm, that's strange. Like I've had people say like, oh, my partner doesn't like when I put stuff on Facebook. And I'm mm. like, Hmm, interesting. Um, so any sign that there's control in that relationship is a huge indicator. Um, some other signs, the perpetrator, they tend to talk poorly about pa their past relationships or they don't um, speak of respect to their current partner. Um, some perpetrators, they come off as the most amazing person in the world and it's a part of the, the display that they're putting on for society and then behind closed doors, they're really violent and abusive. Uh, but other perpetrators who feel very entitled, they'll treat 
treat their partner poorly in public. Mm -hmm. So it's it can be hard to know, okay, is there abuse, is there not? Um, also, isolation is huge in these. So if your friend who might be in an abusive relationship, if they're you know no longer hanging out with you, if they're not going, you know, if they regularly go to church or different activities and they're not showing up to that anymore, it could seem normal. And it's, again, it's a gradual drifting away, but that's a huge warning sign too because um, kind of at the core of domestic violence is control. And ways that perpetrators gain that control is by isolating their partners from resources in the community, from uh, friends, family, interests, hobbies, um, getting them away from having a job, continuing their education, getting a car, getting your driver's license. And that's because they want to force, the perpetrator wants to force that dependency on the victim. So if you're completely dependent on this one person, are you going to leave the relationship? No, you're stuck in that situation. Um, and the other piece that they use to control them is through emotional degradation. So the number one um, side effect of domestic violence is a diminished self-worth. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about people who now feel completely worthless about themselves, who've been brainwashed into believing that the abuse is my fault, I'm the reason this is happening, if I would have done something a little bit differently, I could have you know, avoided the stress. Um, so anyone who is showing, starting to show more insecurity, um, just kind of isolated from the rest of the world, who just feels like their partner, they can never satisfy their partner and is kind of consoling in you and having troubles, but they don't want to talk about it. Those could all be warning signs too. Now, if somebody, heaven forbid, finds themselves in these circumstances or has any kind of questions or needs more information, what is the best way that they can resource DBAC and, and these resources, the sure. services you provide? Yeah, so like I said, we have a 24-hour hotline, and the number to call that is 785-827-5862. Um, you can call that anytime and just talk to someone and you can even speak anonymously. What's great about DVAC is we can never report anything that you tell us. So um, that that's really helpful for abuse victims because they're so scared if someone finds out what's going to happen. Um, you can also walk into our office, which is located at 203 South Santa Fe here in Salina. We also have an office in Concordia, Kansas. Um, and then if you know someone, you can say, hey, will you call DVAC with me? Because it can be very scary to ask for help and just know that DVAC is a non-judgmental place. We will not care if you go back to your perpetrator, or your abuser, your husband, your wife. We don't care. We are here no matter how many times you need us. We'll always be here and listen to you and believe you. And that's so important for people who are going through these difficult times. Definitely. And just to know that the, such a strong support structure and so many options and outlets is mm -hmm. amazing. Um, I tell you, if, if there was... a and I, don't you love when people say this, if you could pick one or two things that are probably the most important message you really want to speak to the community, Salinas, Lane County, and, and um, everyone else in the world that are that is watching, <laughs> what, what would you like to really share that probably the strongest message for um, DBAC? I think we need more education. People, we want to end violence, but that violence and that prevention for ending it starts with the education. Uh, we need to be having these conversations regularly. It shouldn't be taboo to talk about consent, to talk about healthy boundaries, to talk about warning signs and what unhealthy relationships look like. And if we can have that conversation not only with youth, but also with adults and give them support, that's going to be so helpful. That's the long term. The immediate is supporting um, victims, survivors, and perpetrators. So for uh, victims, any way that you can eliminate barriers for them. If they need help with child care to come um, get some stuff done and try to get out of the situation, stepping up and offering to help that. Um, if they need help with transportation, any of their basic needs, and let them guide you and tell you. Oftentimes, we like to tell people, like, you need to do this, you need to do that. Survivors and victims know what is safest for them, so trust that they are the expert. With perpetrators, we think that we're going to solve this issue by just serving victims. Of course, that's we're only doing damage control right? Mm -hmm. So we have to support perpetrators in the sense of holding them accountable, getting them connected to services that will help them. So in Salina, we have a, a couple batterers intervention programs. Oh, and awesome. Yeah, so it's really cool, but unfortunately, there's usually a waiting list, and so we just need more resources to go into those batterers intervention programs, because it's been one of the only proven ways to get an abusive person to stop the abuse, because it's a mindset, it's a belief system, 
system. Mm -hmm. It's something that they think is normal to act like this. So it helps them relearn it. It's a long course um, that's really, really helpful for them. And then oftentimes there's mental health issues, substance abuse issues for both victims and perpetrators. So of course these are huge issues, but any way we can support that, um, getting housing, childcare, these are all national problems. But we as a community can wrap around people who are struggling and really help. And like I told you earlier, it's the kids that are hurting the most out of these yes. because it's setting the stage for the rest of their life. And so if we can intervene, if you know a child who might be in a chaotic household, just being that one positive adult role model for them, because that's been one of the proven ways to get kids um, to break that cycle of abuse is just providing that support system. So being that one person who is stable in their lives is really, really important. It is just amazing to me just the amount of services um, and what a great asset to our community uh, that you guys provide. It just, thank goodness you're here. And again, it would be wonderful if we didn't have the need, but you know. Yeah, um, we like to say we want to work ourselves out of a job. Exactly, exactly. But we're just so grateful you're here. So just real quickly, because we, we kind of got to wrap things up, which always shocks me because I feel like we just started talking. But um, just a quick recap of people just like, website and phone number information if that's okay just to get or, and maybe address as well just to have sure information yeah so our website is www.dvac d v a c k dot org our 24-hour hotline and our office phone number is 785-827-5862 our address is located at 203 south santa fe here in salina october is domestic violence awareness month so on october 14th at jerry ivy park in salina from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. we're doing a celebration and there'll be all sorts of activities for youth and adults and a little memorial area for survivors in our community. That is wonderful. Oh, well, Courtney, thank you so much for coming on the program. And again, thank you for uh, DVAC just being, like I said, such a, a huge resource for um, our community. We just need it. And hopefully someday you won't have a job. <laughs> It'll be nice. <laughs> that is the hope. Yeah, but, um, but just thank you so much for sharing. And please come back. And, and don't forget Slina, October 14th. That's a very important date. So keep on doing great things. And don't be stranger. Come back. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching.